Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And for today, or I should say today, this week's roundtable, we've got the usual suspects. Mike, the Zen Master Zeno. Hey, Mark. Mike, how are you? Doing great. How are you? Good, good. I'm so glad I'm not in your neck of the woods where it's like, <laughs> it's like rainy and windy. I saw Boston's been getting killed yeah we had the worst uh probably night in a long time the other night with the storm it was is uh just all kinds of power lines and accidents all kinds of things i was wor- i was literally worried about you not you personally but like you in the sense like you were like working a 24-hour shift saving people's lives so i guess <laughs> i was worried about you but not like not your house but like your you know <laughs> well that's why work. i boxed you this morning because i didn't know what day it was i'm sorry i missed the round table mark i'm like wait a minute Today is Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Wait, we you got Eric, no nickname Peterson. What's up, Eric? How you doing, Mark? Good to be here. Good, man. Good. We've got Tate, the big Papa Litchfield. Hey, Tate, how are you? I'm doing well. Just laughing because Mike Zeno <laughs> had to he had to box me today too. He must have forgot in between. I forgot the time. The time. You and then he what? told me Mark told me what day it was. You told me what time. So I, the two of you, uh, perfect. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. And, of course, you should be posting automatically your Craigslist postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. And, by the way, do you guys know you can also automatically post on Facebook, buy, sell groups, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? Uh, pulse is normal. Respiration's fine. Uh, back from a nice, relaxing 20th anniversary wedding trip to San Francisco. And uh, now I'm back. And I want to talk about effort as our first topic. Underestimating efforts. Scott, when you see underestimating effort, what does that, what do you make, what does that make you think of? Matt, you know, I think that, uh, I think that, you know, we live in an instant gratification society. And I think that people think that oh, I can just do this one little thing or two little things and success is going to come to me. And that's like, just not the case. I mean, you've got to take more effort and do more work to complete the tasks that you want to complete than what you really think. It's un- you, you got to overestimate it. Yeah. Uh, Tate Litchfield, what, what does it make you think? I about? mean, you know, it's the amount of requirements work required when you're starting, especially it's, I mean, it's, we see it all the time on the marketing side of things. People think, Oh, you know, I'm going to post my first Craigslist ad and boom, my phone's going to be ringing off the hook and people are going to be throwing money at me. Or when people send out their first, you know, deal of the week or letter to their buyers list, they think, Oh, great. You know, the guys on the podcast, they say, this is the Holy grail. They send that email out and it's crickets. Well, they don't realize that it requires more than just an email. It requires picking up the phone, follow-up emails, hounding these people to make them realize that they want this. So the amount of work required, it's, it's, I mean, it's, you can't even measure it. It's, it's, it's daunting at first, but then it gets slowly more manageable. Yeah. How about you, Eric Peterson? What do, what do you think about when you, when you hear the word underestimating effort? Or the phrase, I should say. I, I think what comes to mind immediately is just, um, uh, you know, kind of as Tate was saying, we, we often see it in the community um, where, you know, uh, someone will start off strong, whether that's on mailing or marketing or what have you, and they don't see the results right away, whether that's right away being a week later or two days later, um, you know, and then they get discouraged and rather than continuing to plug away at it and just, you know, keep going because you're going to get there if you keep going, they instead either taper off or just, you know, pull back completely and, you know, kind of lose the effort that they put into it by just, uh, by giving up too early. So um, that's, that's kind of what it means to me, I think. Yeah. uh, Yeah. I, I, I agree. How about you, Mike Zeno? What do you think about? Well, I think it's the consistency. I think that yeah, people want instant gratification, but the thing is, some people do, right? But they realize that we're doing the same things over and over again. It's the consistency. 
consistent effort we're putting in. So you can do that thing once, you can mail out once, you can market once, you can send to the neighbors once, you can send to your buyers list once, but the, what separates the people that succeed and those who don't is the consistency. And the consistency is what brings about the results. So if you do it like, hey, I put five ads out, why is no one bought my property? Or I sent a hundred mailings out, why am I not buying land? Or whatever it may be. It's just, it's the false expectations. It's like, you know, this, that, that you're doing the right things, but are you consistently doing the right things? That's what's going to move the needle. And that's what separates the people who succeed and don't. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, it's funny. I, I, it kind of makes me think of uh, when I was younger and I was, uh, you know, getting into like, you know, weightlifting and bodybuilding and I had a personal trainer and I was, you know, getting into it. And I remember saying to my personal trainer, um, you know, how long is this going to take? before I see any results. And he kind of looked at me like, first of all, you've, it's taken you years, by the way, to get to where you are right now, <laughs> right? Years. So, you know, your expectation of any kind of change, uh, yeah, like it, you might see a little bit of change after 90 days, I'm like 90 days. And I mean, I worked out really, really hard. I did everything you said to do. I didn't see any change for 90 long, excruciating, painful days. And then I didn't really see any really, you know, like my friends would look at me like, you know, that was like a year later that I saw any kind of improvement at all after, you know, consistently showing up at 4.30 in the morning, working out really, really hard with this guy, pushing myself to limits. And uh, it took a long, you know, to me, it felt like a long time. And, you know, a lot of it might just be poor genes or whatever it is, but uh you know, it took, took a long time. It made me think like, I mean, think about things in your own life, like, right? Like all the bad things happen really fast, right? You get that horrible call in the middle of the night, you know, your grandmother just passed away. Boom. That's fast, right? Um, all the bad things happen super, super fast. All the good stuff, all the things that we're proud of, all the rewarding things in life take a long time. They take time, right? I mean, gosh, Nine months just to have a baby, Tate. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, wasn't that long, <laughs> right? I mean, you know, or just, uh, I mean, think about like your own lives, right? Like, I mean, we're, we're like, what are some like the proudest things? I mean, take they take long time. There, it's nothing is effortless or instant gratification. Rarely will provide that type of reward. And so, I think when we're talking about underestimating effort, I know I'm talking a lot, by the way. So feel free to jump in. But when I, when I think about underestimating effort, I think about that, like get rid of the timeline and focus on, okay, if I know that Scott and Tate and Eric and Mike are posting 16 ads a day and they've been doing this a long time and they're successful, I should probably be doing 32. Like there needs to be a baseline of a minimal amount of effort. And I think a lot of times, correct me if I'm wrong, people don't know what that is sometimes, especially if they're not in coaching. I mean, what do you think, Tate? Yeah, I mean, you got to know what other people are doing to get their success and either match it or exceed it. And the thing that a lot of people forget is it took Scott a long time to get to where he's at with his land business. It took you a long time. It took Mike a long time, right? They put in the work. These guys were all willing to do whatever it took to achieve success. And if you have that same mentality, all of a sudden spending all day posting ads, isn't that hard to do? Yeah. Yeah. Eric, how about you? I mean, we're, I think we're all sort of, uh, you know, we're all sort of seduced by the, the ease of someone's success, right? The overnight success sort of myth when in reality it's, you know, there, you might see a, you might see a, you know, a, uh, an outlier here or there. I'm thinking of like Instagram, right? The guy sold out for a billion dollars after a year. But when you think about, uh, I forget his name, but like, you know, he's a Stanford grad. Like he had to do a lot of things even to get to that point to even, you know, do Instagram. But um, Eric, what do you think about that? Well, I, I think that's, that's, a, that's pretty true. I mean, we look at, you know, people's success that, especially when we don't know them, we don't, you know, kind of have regular interaction with them. And we see that, you know, what, what seems to be, you know, that yesterday they were, you know, an average Joe and, and, you know, today they're successful. I mean, that's how it looks to the outsider, right? Because 
Um, we hear about it in some form, whether it's news or, uh, you know, people talking or what have you. Um, and it just, it seems like, well, it was just a, a switch that was flipped and, you know, now this person is a success and, you know, they've achieved what they wanted to achieve, but, you know, missing everything underneath the surface that, that got them there, you know, all that work they put in before that and, and maybe, you know, depending on their situation are, are still putting in to achieve those results and, and maintain that success. Yeah. I mean, you know, here's the question, Mike, if I, if I offered you a pill, a magical pill, right. And it offered you unlimited freedom, unlimited flex- flexibility. You never had to worry about money again. Okay. That bucket of stress is gone. You work when you want, with whom you want, where you want, and travel the world. You just got to swallow this one pill. Okay. How much would you pay for that pill? And would, how long would you even think about it also right, right. before swallowing it? No, that's a good analogy. That's a good analogy. And I think that, uh, you know, that's there for, you know, anybody who, I mean, there's a lot of things that come into play, right? What makes you happy in life and what, you know, what you need to have to be happy. And but that's individual. But I think what you're saying is so true because you do you know, at a certain point in this business with the fact that our business is boring serves us well, because the fact that it's boring is you can systemate and automate it. And that's exciting right now. We can make money doing hardly anything. When we say an hour a week, we lie. It's less than an hour a week. We're not doing, it doesn't take that long. It's, um, and I think the efforts that it get there reminds me of like, I've already told you, I'm my Tai Chi teacher. How long did I get clear of Tai Chi? I 10 years. I go, 10 years? He's like, well, 10 years is coming either way. You're going to be good at Tai Chi or not. So a year now from now is coming. Are you going to sell land? A month from now is coming. Are you going to do the 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 ads? Are you going to send out 500,000 mailings? It's all com- time's coming but the consistent efforts that you're going to put in are going to either bring results or you're going to be sitting there going, man, I didn't get any um, properties. Well, how many letters did you mail? Well, I mailed out a hundred three weeks ago. How come nothing's happened? Or I sent out two ads or, you know, I'm not trying to make fun of anybody, but the reality is the efforts we put in bring results, right? And if you're going to do consistent efforts, you're going to have everybody here that's doing this. Everybody we know that's successful has consistent efforts. They developed consistent behaviors and you know, a year from now is coming either way. Are you, did you sell land? Did you buy land? Well, that's up to you right now in your daily habits. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Scott Todd, any, any final sage words of advice? I, I just love what Mark, uh, Mike said. You know, 10 years is going to come one way or the other. What are you, you going to do with it? You know, just, just keep going. Keep moving your feet. Even, even when things look like they're not working, I think that that's the problem is people look at something and they're like, oh, it's not working. And then they just stop. And the minute that you stop, it's so much harder to, to do it again. It really is. Yeah. I mean, I, th- I think a lot of it is fear. And I think a lot of it is, is, you know, frustration tolerance. Like, Hey, you know, Tate's like, you know, he looks like he's 14 years old. Like, you know, why, why is this so hard? And the reality is, is that, you know, comparisons, the thief of happiness, like you need to work as, is you know, you need to almost have like this faith. Like if I just do these things, it's going to eventually happen. Go ahead, Tate. Well, I was going to say, I always tell people this business is an if then statement. Right. And it, it, you say that again. Okay, gonna, yeah, uh, I always ahead. tell people, I always tell them it's an if then statement. If you do this, you will have this as the result, right? If you post ads on Craigslist, then you will sell your property right? If you mail, then you will have the opportunity to buy, right? It's, it's, it's a very simple equation. If you do this, the result will be this. Yeah, it's, it's so true. And you know, how many, how many businesses can you really say, Hey, there's a one-to-one ratio between effort and results, right? There's not that, that many, I mean, a lot of it's lux involved or, um, you know, not, not so much in this niche. There's just such a massive market, no one doing it. It's, it's kind of crazy. All right, let's let's pivot to something that you know has personally been annoying me that I see this in the Facebook group when people post about, hey, how can I collect a down payment? Now I'm going to be very generous of this information, how to collect a down payment, but there is one really great way to do it um, that makes it super easy. But Mike Zeno, how 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 do you collect down payments, or how would you recommend someone get a down payment? Right. Well, we know the obvious that we're talking about. So we're talking about 
We're talking about other ways. Is that we're looking at? Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about all the other ways before before we talk about my favorite way. Okay. Well, in the beginning, I know, and you know, this is this is always brought up in the uh, in the uh, different discussions. You know, in the beginning, I don't see why. You know, if you take a payment here or there through uh, through uh, PayPal, I don't think anybody's going to crucify you. I don't think they're going to immediately kick you off. I know that they don't prefer that that type of business, but you know, I, I think that that's definitely a possibility. So, since there's only you know. I think that uh, that's, I'll throw that out initially, right? That, you know, if you're starting off and you're dealing with a person that wants to, uh, you know, pay you some money, then invoice them through PayPal and don't worry about it. You know, if they kick you off, they kick you off. I don't think it's going to happen right away. My experience was I was able to do that for a very long time under the radar. I just didn't, you know, uh, it was a simple transaction and I never had an issue. So I think that that's definitely a possibility in the beginning, in the beginning. Okay, great. Uh, how about you, Eric Peterson? Um. Well, I, th I think that the next two obvious um, solutions are uh, Stripe and Square. Um, both of those are online credit card merchants. Um, you can take payments over the phone. You can send an invoice um, through uh, Square. I don't know if you can do that in Stripe. Um, but again, it's, it's, um, it is, there is a level of risk involved in it in that uh, you could get your account closed down um, in doing land transactions. Um, but I think, uh, what's the rule, Mark, if it's, if it's a down payment or a dock fee or just a, a flat payment and it's not recurring, that if you're, as long you're it's much not more recurring, safe. You're, you're much safer, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tate, how about you? I know what you're going to say, but. Well, I mean. All, all the young hip kids are doing this app. Yeah, Venmo or there's a million different apps out there where you can instantly transfer money real easily. In fact, I was uh, looking at in my bank and they have Wells Fargo actually has a, a service now within it. And it's called Zelle, Z-E-L-L-E, -E, where you can basically transfer funds from one Wells Fargo account to another. It's kind of like a wire transfer, but similar to Venmo in the sense that it's, you know, super simple and you can do it with just an email address and that occurs instantly. So, you know, there's lots of different technique, you know, new apps or different features to go ahead and do it. Um, Venmo is great. It's not so great if you have to teach somebody how to use it and then have them download it. It's a perfect app for somebody that's familiar with it ahead of time. Yeah. Yeah. How about you, Scott Todd? How, how would you prefer to get your down payment? Well, you know, I, I think that you, PayPal, right, whatever. I mean, I think too people, too many people get hung up on the fact that yeah, these these companies don't like our business. But you know what? They only know that you're in that business because you tell them, and you're like, hey, it's Scott's Land Company, as opposed to hey, it's Scott Todd just accepting the payment, right? But uh, look, I mean, sometimes people tell me like, oh, I want to pay with a check. You know, I, I want to make a check, and and I'm all about now. So I would say, oh, check, yeah, no problem. If you give me your ACH number, the routing number, the numbers on the bottom of your check and um, you know, your checking account number. Well, then I can go ahead and draft it directly from directly from there. And we can kind of complete this without you even having to mail us mail anything. And they're like, well, how do you do that? I'm like, it's kind of electronic check. So there's, there's two services you can look at. First is checkkeeper.com, right? I, I mean, I use checkkeeper.com to kind of uh, mail my, my payments to my, um, to my um, sellers. However, you can go in there and create a template and you know what, you can say, Hey, here's a template for, uh, for Mark's checking account and, and go ahead and print out a check right from your own home and, and do that. There's also a service you could look at called uh, pay simple, pay simple.com. And they do e checks, right? Like you can go in there and, and uh, start accepting electronic checks and, you know, for, forget this need of, Oh, uh, how do I collect payment? Just do it somehow. I mean, like I said, keep moving your feet and figure it out. Yeah, yeah. I like checkbook.io, Scott. Checkbook.io, that's good too. Yeah, yeah. But I'll check out Pay Simple. Is yeah, it less check money? Checkbook.io is like a buck. I think CheckKeeper is a buck. Well, the, the thing about CheckKeeper that I like is the fact that um, it doesn't require CheckKeeper to, to do it the way I do it. It doesn't require that they, um, that they kind of create an account or anything. I just take their checking account information and just draft that, that one amount. Pay simple is kind of the same thing. I, I take their checking account information, print out my own check and off to the races I go. That's pretty good. That's really good. Well, if you don't know, you can actually get down payments 
on geekpay.io. And uh, I don't know, Eric Peterson, why I'm not overwhelmed with new geekpay.io customers. You have to explain that to me. But we are working on it. We are improving it. We are creating a, a, a purple cow uh, as in the world of brown cows. And that, you know, those new features that are going to, you know, make people's heads explode are, are, you know, being worked on. But in the meantime, you know, you can, you can collect a down payment via Stripe. It automates it. And then it automates collecting the ACH every single month as well. Um, and it's, you know, it's actually a profit center when you think about the time savings. And if you charge the doc fee and you charge a monthly fee, it's a profit center. It doesn't, it's the only software as a service that I know that's actually making you money because it saves you time and makes you money. I don't know. What am I missing? I'm missing something. <laughs> Eric? <laughs> what am I missing? Eric? I, I <laughs> Eric, don't think you're missing anything. Wait, 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 yeah. he, missed his, he missed his cue. Come on. Is it, is it poor marketing on my part? Maybe it's just bad marketing. <laughs> I feel like um, anybody that's collecting terms payments should be using GeekPay. Now, you know, granted, you know, newer people in the community, they're, they're maybe not to that point yet. And I could understand that, but as soon as they get their first one, yeah, I mean, you've got to try it. I mean, it's, it's, uh, there's no better solution. So, um, yeah. All right, fine. That's that's enough of a geekpay.io commercial. Speaking of commercials, today's podcast is sponsored by postingdomination.com forward slash land geek. All right. Tips of the week. Are we ready? We're there. We're there. Mike's like, wow. I didn't think it would go that fast. Jeez. So, Mike, why don't we start with you? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, I'll skip. Yeah, I'll be nice. All right, let's start with Tate. Tate's got a tip of the week. All right. So I'm going to do a uh, round, ta- round table first and actually share a movie quote for my tip of the week. How about that? All so I right. uh, don't know if this is allowed or not, but I'm, I'm, I'm calling it. So there's a great movie out there, <laughs> and it is called, I'm sure most of you have seen it. It's called The Wolf of Wall Street. It's got, of got Leo in it, you know. XOXO, Leo, give me a call. But um, he's got one scene in it, and it's a motivational scene. And uh, in it, he talks about the power of the telephone. And I was thinking about it last week and how powerful the telephones are. I can't read the whole transcript because uh, it's not round table. Uh, we'd have to weep out a lot of it. But you, uh, could say, you could say fork or forkin. I'll just read the main gist that I love. And he says... You see those little black boxes? They're called telephones. I'm going to let you in on a secret about those telephones. They're not going to dial themselves, right? And then he goes in to talk about how you need to be telephone terrorist. And I thought, that's pretty amazing. That's a pretty powerful statement. And it applies directly to what we do, right? Every single person in this business should be trying to get people on the phone. Now, when you get them on the phone, do you call them one time? Or are you calling them consistently all the time? When you get a new property, are you giving them a call and saying, hey, Mark, first right of refusal, yes or no? And if you're not, you need to start doing that. So check it out. If you guys want to see that, it's a three-minute long video clip. Um, it's from Leonardo DiCaprio. It's, uh, you, know, you can type in YouTube, the Wolf of Wall Street telephone scene. It's fantastic. It'll get you pumped up. Um, Pick up the phone, guys. The best way to make money on the internet is on the phone. So do it. Nothing like quoting a degenerate drug addict. I know. Like Jordan <laughs> Belfort. But it is, it, is a good, it is a good scene. And, you know, he did, he did clean up. He did clean up. I thought about that when I was thinking. I was like, oh, man, the guy's a real scumbag. But there's a good principle. There's an underlying yeah, principle. Yeah, exactly. I dropped it in the, I dropped a, a little link in the, um, in the chat bar. You guys have to watch that video after we hang up. Cause it's, good. yeah. I mean, again, you know, if you're listening to this and like, you come from like, you know, the Zig Ziglar world, like I do, um, you know, you gotta remember Tate's, you know, just turned 15 and <laughs> you know, this is, this is like who he's growing up with is, yeah. is Wolf of wall street. Right. Like, like, you know, Scott and I grew up with like wall street, 
uh you know the you know the greed is good the 80s movie yeah greed is good uh, what's kind of that thing. michael douglas michael yeah. douglas yeah i know so he tastes like what what movie is that, oh, is that an oliver God. stone movie Gee, is that gotta go back. what's yeah, that it's in, co- is it it's in, in color? color yeah oh. it's not him <laughs> off cut them off yeah cut them off. i know is it it tastes color? like is it, is it a silent movie oh. <laughs> unbelievable <laughs> that's good all right let's go to the other young guy in the group eric peterson what's your I thought you were gonna say me week? eric <laughs> <laughs> the super young guy <laughs> all right so uh speaking of phones uh you know apple released the new uh iphone 10 this week um and of course the iphone 8 before that so if you're looking for a place to sell your old phone um gazelle i uh, don't know if you guys know about gazelle but i've used them many times to to uh sell off old phones and it's just super easy to do it's so much less of a headache than putting it on ebay and dealing with that so um that's all i got this week all right nice i you know you can use posting domination and actually automate the listings you could you know but then you'd have to meet someone in a parking lot and hand them the phone would you really want to do that uh i've done it it's kind of fun (laughs) it's like taking an uber you know, it's str- I don't, I don't have the stranger danger. Like maybe I should, but I don't, I don't know. Mike Zando's like, <laughs> what, what do you know. say, Mike? I don't know. I don't know. I, stranger danger. Yeah. You gotta be careful. You definitely don't want to go meeting in, uh, in the parking lot by yourself, transferring anything to anybody, you know, at least go to Dunkin' Donuts or McDonald's or Starbucks or, or Panera. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, definitely. Like, like, let's you know. First of all, that that's like a litmus sign right there. Like, if they even know what Panera is, like, oh, you're a healthy eater, you know. If they're like, oh, you know, if they're like, hey, let's let's meet at the local, you know, wing stop. Like, whoa, okay. What's this Panera you speak of? I don't know. All right, Mike Zito, the Zen Master. What's your tip of the week? It's a Zen quote but it's going to relate directly to what we talked about today. So everybody could, and I'm not going to, I'm going to, I'm going to cover over Scott's face when I say it, because he makes me laugh and I can never finish. So here we go. It says before enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. After enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. We all know that, right? That's a, that's a pretty, uh, but look at before success, mail in market, after success, mail in market, right? This is the only way you're going to get the business done. Well, how do you want to get good at this business? How do you want to succeed? You mail in market. When you're, when you succeed, how do you stay good? You mail in market. I mean, that's it. This, that's it. You're just going to, stay consistent after you become successful the same things happen the only difference is i'd argue is we're not doing them but they're still happening for our business they're still happening for our in within our model uh, we've just automated it but these same things are happening phenomenal phenomenal scott didn't even laugh he must have liked it yeah he must have liked it you you have an impact on me mike what can i say <laughs> scott what's your tip of the week well, actually, I think Mike will like this tip, okay? Uh, I think you guys all will, but look, over the weekend, I actually had a chance to meet uh, meet this guy. He's an author. He's a real estate investor. He is a pilot, and he started flying about uh, eight years ago, I guess, you know, so I don't know, maybe about the same, I don't know, maybe a little bit younger where I am today, and he was a successful real estate investor, but he had like some internal conflicts, you know, like he was, he was struggling with some things. He had this house uh, that, that just wasn't kind of cash flowing for him. You know, like it was kind of a, a nuisance to him. He, he just had some transactions that were not there. He, you know, this was after he learned how to fly and everything. And basically he, he was looking for like the in, you know, like his journey inward, if you will. He was looking for like his why, if you will, like his, what can he do? And uh, basically what he decided to do is he decided like, okay, look, I would really, really, really like to uh, fly a single engine plane around the world. And so he basically kind of came up with his strategy to do that. And he said, you know, man, I just don't know. I, you know, I got this, these other deals. I got this, you know, this apartment that I can't sell. I got this, uh, you know, I, I'm just not sure how I would do this while I was away. So he said, look to the universe. He said, listen, if you just help me, like send me the sign, just help me. Like, can I, can I 
can I sell these properties? Can I get them fixed? Can I get them going? And if so, I will dedicate the next two years of my life to kind of helping others. And literally he said like within 48 hours, he, that house that wouldn't sell, he had a cash offer on it. Bam. Money starts flowing to him like crazy. And he's like, that's it. The universe has told me I need to go forward and do this trip around the world because he was doing it to raise awareness and money for like an organization. So he, uh, he, he was successful in flying around the world. I mean, he, he had to conquer a lot of fears to do so. He, he kind of walks through that. And he wrote two books, right? The first one is Flying Through Life flying through life. You can get these on Amazon. You can also check out his website, flyingthroughlife.com. And, you know, so he, he wrote this book, flying through life, how to grow your business and relationships with applied spirituality. Great book. I mean, so far I'm, I'm not like all the way through it, but so far great. He then also followed that up and he wrote another book that I know Mike's going to love just this. It's, it's called the Zen pilot, right? Oh, Flight right. of passion and the journey within. And so I have not started going through this one, but basically this is about his, his journey of flying around the world, seeking like, you know, kind of like his inward, you know, looking kind of, can I get through this? How do I solve these problems? How do I overcome these fears? How do I just keep doing this? And, you know, he takes all of the money from these two books, believe it or not, he takes all of the money and he basically donates it back to charity. So he goes out, he does, he does speeches and programs to try to generate awareness for his books. I mean, this, you can just tell this guy's not really about, about it for the money. He was selling these two books for like literally $20 and like all of the cash was going back into uh, kind of charity. So, you know, essentially check them out. I think you guys would like them. Well, I, I think that what we should be doing, Scott, is if everybody who goes into flight school should get Zen Pilot from us that or the the flying through life i'll i'll choose i'll choose, you choose. let me read it I'll choose. what do you think mike it's a, it's a pretty good glue gift i think it's excellent yeah yeah and, and we're kind of doing and we're doing a good thing for the world too we're yeah that's right. Amazon right now yeah yep. awesome all right so my tip of the week is kind of a weird one but it, it's download either oh no it tastes like great all right, I, I download the 60 Minutes app or actually just watch 60 Minutes online. But there was a really, for me, it was transformative. A little, I think it was like maybe 12 or 15 minutes and look up the Hubble telescope. Have you guys seen that segment on the Hubble telescope? It tells you how old I am that I'm watching 60 Minutes, by the way. But anyways, if you really want to get a sense of perspective, and just how insignificant we really are in this universe. And for what, some reason, that makes me actually feel really good. Um, in, a, in a weird way, I can't explain it, but um, we're here for like a blink of an eye. We're super insignificant and the universe is vast, right? I actually think it's called vast. And you see like just how vast the universe is. And so it, it's a really great, segments 12 minutes um it'll really help you get perspective in life and uh like every time i get like a little depressed i'd look like i think of this hubble telescope thing i'm like you know what we're just a bunch of monkeys circling on a rock like <laughs> like we're so insignificant so that's my tip of the week i like it tate any uh snarky comments no i uh just watch it. Just watch it. I think the Hubble telescope's awesome. So it, it's incredible what we've been yeah. able to find. Uh, I'm surprised Tate even knows what that is. I do know. Uh, I mean, that's oh. like from the '90s, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe older. I don't know. He probably follows them on Instagram. <laughs> I, I've been. Uh, yeah, the other quote. What was the book? I've been listening to it. I forget the name. Mark, you recommended. It. At first, I listened to about the afterlife stories, but at first, you're oh, like, the afterlife is so good. Yeah, what's going on? And all of a sudden, it hits you. Each one hits you like at a moment. Like it, it, it makes an impact, but it takes a second. And when it hits you, it hits you like a brick. Boom. Oh, you're like, I know. I, I I read the one about the different yous in the afterlife. Yeah. And so, like the yous that that made good choices. <laughs> and like you know and then you know you have to then you're you're like you're you don't want to hang out with the youth that made the bad choices like you're kind of like dismissive of them well you should have been watching tv as much as you did look at all like look at look how <laughs> look your life you ended did. Up. <laughs> right right and it's, it's a really it's yeah 
That's a great book. All right. Well, are we good guys? We are good, Mark. Yeah. All right. Well, I want to thank all the listeners. I hope you guys are getting a lot out of the round tables. Uh, again, go to postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek and start automating your Craigslist and Facebook postings. Um, also start signing up for boot camp. If you haven't done that, go to the land geek.com forward slash boot camp. If you're interested in November flight school, it's coming up. Uh, schedule call with Mike or Scott. Go to uh, the land forward slash training. Just scroll down and schedule a time. All right. Should we do it? Let's go, Mark. One, two, three. Let freedom ring. Yeah, that's really good when you don't look at each other. I finished funny. like three seconds ahead of you guys. I got to play it off better, Tate. Ah, jeez. It's not bad. All right. I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go run to lunch. What are you guys doing now? <laughs> lunch. Lunch. Going to Vegas lunch. Rich. Lunch. Cleaning my pool. It's getting cold, Mark. Hey, are you doing Wim Hof still? Are you, gonna, are you it's swimming? Like, it's in the 40s. <laughs> oh. I, I'll tell you what, I took a cold shower in San Francisco. It was refreshing compared oh, to yeah. here. <laughs> oh, my Ma- gosh. Mike, I'm going to go stand outside because it's fall <laughs> here, and I'm going to wait for the leaves to fall. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to try to swing it with my bat, but there's no, there's no leaves falling, so I might have to go shake the tree first and like you know, smash you know, it as they're falling down. I got an idea. I got an idea. It's going to uh, just don't worry. I got, I got something to fix that. I'll take care of it. We'll be talking about another round table. <laughs> oh boy. He's going to send me some leaves. You watch. Oh, great. Yeah. If I have to rake gotta, anything, yeah. I'm done. I'm going to say, just cut this open and dump it on his front lawn. He's going to love oh, it. Oh no, no. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. That'd be great though. Like <laughs> Mark, have you ever been to new England? Like in the winter? Like, have you ever been to new England around? No, this time I, I gotta go. I, I gotta go to Boston. Okay. So, or Philadelphia uh, about this time of year, I've been to like the New York area. And you got all these, like, my, I can just imagine Mike's trees. Like, you got all these big trees that during the summer, they're just like beautiful, you know, green trees. And this time of the year, there are leaves every, like, they are piled up on the side of the road, just begging someone to come and, <laughs> and like, pick them up, right? Like, all of this stuff. And, you know, I can just imagine, like, there's a great business, man. And we load those things up in a, in a um, dump truck and drive it down to Florida and just dump it on people's lawns, like, as a gag gift. <laughs> You know, it's not a bad idea, you know, idea. The, you know, those, cause it's, it's beautiful actually. Like the, you know, those leaves are changing colors and like oh, out here yeah. we don't get it. So we don't get it either. Scottsdale in Florida, man, we can, we could do this. It's not a bad idea. That's how I started, by the way. If you ever, if you ever, uh, read that book, uh, Stephen Johnson, how we got to now, they started shipping ice to the East coast. Um, it's crazy. Sawdust guy. Anyways, I digress. All right. All right, guys. <laughs> Have a good one. See you later. See ya. See ya.